Blessed be the name of the Lord, amen. Our Lord is good. Thank you. Thank you, singers, musicians. Our Lord is good. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not his benefits, for he has forgiven you of all your sins, and he has healed you of all your diseases, and he has taken you, redeemed you from destruction. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me bless him bless him bless him bless his holy name he has crowned you he has crowned you with his goodness he has crowned you with his loving kindness he has crowned you with favor bless the Lord oh my soul and all that is within me we're gonna bless his holy name today hallelujah hallelujah to the lamb to the lamb of God amen well hello beautiful peoples y'all ready to praise the Lord Jesus Christ yeah, we're going to talk about heaven today, and we're going to take you to the most craziest place. Uh, it's in John chapter 20, and you're like, how are you going to talk about heaven when you're in the tomb? We're going to see. So we're going to chapter 20 of the book of John. If you got your Bible, turn with me. The book of John, chapter 20, verse 11, and it starts with saying, but Mary stood outside by the tomb weeping, and she wept. She looked down and looked into, to, into the tomb. So where are we? Friday has already passed. The, res, the, the, the death of Jesus Christ, he was sabotaged. He was hated. He was murdered. He was taken to the cross. He bled on Calvary. He was brought to the tomb, and he's in the tomb, and this is now Sunday. So we're talking about Sunday morning. He's resurrected. His people don't know. The disciples don't know anything about it. But he has already resurrected. Mary and the ladies come to the tomb. They're going to spice up Jesus Christ. They're going to put spices on him, myrrh and frankincense. And, and they look and they, he, the tomb is empty. And they run back and they tell Peter and John, John and Peter come. They look, it's empty. And the one who lingers, everybody else goes, is Mary Magdalene. You know, she loved him so much because she had seven demons and he had cast those demons, those devils, those wretched, oppressive spirits in her. He had cast it out of her and she, she was forgiven for so much. So she loved him so, so much. And so she stayed there at the tomb and now we see that she's looking, she stoops down and she looks into the tomb and what does she saw? see? She saw two angels in white sitting one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had laid. We read in verse 12. And they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? We want to know what she saw. So she sees a slate where there's a big rock and Jesus' body was there, but now it's bloody. And then there's an angel at the head. There's an angel at the feet. We want to flash back. Flash back to Exodus 25, verse 10. Go to the Old Testament. What did she see? This is what she saw. She saw the Ark of the Covenant. Now, what are we talking about? We have our high priest here in the Holy of Holies. It was the Israelites were 400 years under slavery, under Pharaoh. And, and then the, Moses comes up and like, you got to let my people go. And Pharaoh says, no. And God said, I'm going to slap you. And God takes them out. God takes them out to, through the Red Sea. And they're going to go to the promised land. It's going to take seven, ten days. Why it take 40 years, y'all? Why? Because they're fretting, they're complaining, watch your mouth, it's going to take much longer. And so according to Psalm 37, 8 through 9, those who fret go into evil. The fretting leads to evil. Fretting leads to sin. So um, I know y'all don't fret, <laughs> but if you do, stop it. So... Because it's, it's not 40 years, y'all got to think. And so, so they, they go through, they finally get to the promised land. But in the desert, they, have, they build a tabernacle where God resides with them. His spirit resides. God never leaves. 
He's always with you. And so he, he, in the, there's an outer court where they sacrifice. There's a holy of holies where there's the bread and there's the light. And then you come to the holy of holies where the Ark of the Covenant is. And we have a high priest that once a year, he would go into the holy, only once a year. He would go into the holy of holies, sacrifice an innocent lamb, and then he would take the blood and he would put it on the mercy seat. And when God saw the blood of an innocent lamb, an innocent bullock, an innocent goat, he would forgive the sins of his people. And the, the high priest would come out through the holy of holies, to the holy place, to the outer court, and he would say, forgiven! forgiven, forgiven, and the people would rejoice, would rejoice, would rejoice that their sins had been forgiven for a whole year. This is the Ark of the Covenant. Inside the Ark, you'd find the Ten Commandments. You'd find the manna. You'd find Aaron's rod to say God provides, God directs, God gives. It's his favor, but above all that is the mercy seat where the blood is, because where the blood is, is above all. What did she see? She saw two angels, and now we flash forward at the tomb, one at the head, one at the feet, and she saw the mercy seat. She saw Jesus Christ, if you will. He's not there. He had risen, yet, according to 1 John 4.10, 1 John 4.10, this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and he sent his only son as a propitiation for our sins. What does that word mean, propitiation, atonement? You're, it's paid for. And if you go to the Greek word, propitiation, he lost most. It's the exact same word in Hebrew for mercy seat. Jesus Christ is the propitiation. He's the atonement. He's the one that forgives. He's the one that went to Calvary and his blood was shed and he is the mercy seat. And when God looks down on Jesus Christ and he looks at you and the blood is on you, he says, forgiven, forgiven, forgiven. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Thank you for our high priest, Robert. And thank you for Curtis who played Jesus Christ. Bless the Lord, all my soul, all that is within me. What did Mary see? Oh, she saw Jesus before seeing Jesus. And the, the angels are like, why are you weeping? She's like, they took away my Lord. I don't know where they've taken him. Tell me where they took him. And now she turns around and looks outside of the tomb. And we're in verse 14. And she saw Jesus, but she don't know it's Jesus. She doesn't know it, whether it's crying and the tears and the anguish or the sun is shining in her eyes. She doesn't know it's Jesus. She thinks it's the gardener. And Jesus says to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? And y'all know, y'all know, in the history of the world, this is the first rap song ever written by Jesus Christ. Because he's like, woman, why are you weeping? And whom are you seeking? Uh. He didn't say, uh. I just said, uh. So she, he, he wants to know. And she's supposing that he's the gardener. She said to him, sir, sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where he's at. I, I'll go get him. And Jesus says one of the most beautiful words ever, ever, ever written in the Bible. This is one of my favorite verses ever. It's in verse 16 of chapter 20. It's a simple word. All he says is, Mary. And isn't that, well, can you hear when he says Mary, he's not like Mary. Get yourself put together, girl. Stop crying. It's Mary. His lips are drenched with grace. And when he's talking and saying Mary, he's actually saying, Mary, I am the bread of life. He who believes in me will never hunger. He who believes in me will never thirst. Mary, Mary, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you will never be in the darkness, but you will have the light of life. Mary, I am the gate. If you enter through me, you will be saved and you will find green pastures. Mary, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life. For the sheep, Mary, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me, though he dies, yet shall he live. Mary, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. Mary, Mary, no one comes to the Father except through me, Mary. 
I'm the vine, you're the branches. If you remain in me and I remain in you, you will bear much fruit. Without me, you can do nothing, Mary. I love you, Mary. Can you imagine if you could just change that word to your name? Can you, for a second, can you yell out your name for me real quick? Awesome. So whether it's Carol or Stephen or Jim or Bob, whatever, Julie, whoever you are, he calls you right now. And he says, I will never leave you. I will never sabotage you. I will never trip you. I will never divorce you. I will never abandon you. I will never forsake you. I come to you to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. I will carry you when you can't walk. I will lift you up when you are tired, when you are down, when you are sick. I will lift you up with my righteous right hand. Come to me, all who are weary, and I will give you rest. That's what Jesus would say to you. She turned to him and said, Rabboni, which means he's the master of all rabbis. You know, he's the doctor of all doctors. He's the surgeon of all surgeons. He's the lawyer of all lawyers. This man, Jesus Christ, God himself is so beautiful. Remember, his lips are drenched with grace. Jesus said to her, don't cling to me. In verse 17, for I have not yet ascended to my father, but go, go tell my brethren and say to them, I, I am ascending to my father and your father and my God and your God. This already tells me that the resurrection is for real. Y'all want to know why? That this is proof for me that the resurrection is, why? Because he chose a woman. And you're like, oh, that's not good to say, Dr. Sam. Chill out for one second. At that time, there are two people who were never allowed in court. You would not hear their words. One, shepherd. When he was born, who he called? Shepherds. When he resurrected, who he's calling? A woman. People who were not believed and they had the lowest standard and status in society. They were treated like second class, third class, fourth class, zero class. And he chooses a woman. You know, if you were to write a book and you were to make it all good, you would take out the prostitutes that's in your genealogy. Jesus didn't. He put it there. He put those women in the genealogy. And he's now talking to a woman. And he's telling the woman to go and tell the brothers. Now, if you wrote that book, you'd say, oh, we call the king. We call Pilate. We call somebody high in status. No. He chooses the lowly and lifts them up. And today he chooses you in the name of Jesus to do mighty works for him. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Is Jesus lying is he a lunatic or is he for real? Because he's like, I have not yet ascended. Don't cling to me. It, I'm like, I, I had a hard time with that verse. You're like, where the hard time is? I, I don't see it. Um, look, he said he, already, he has not yet ascended. But on Friday, when he was on the cross and he's talking to the thief that comes to, the thief, that, that comes to Jesus Christ, he says what to him? Today, you'll be with me in paradise. Luke 23, 43. What does he say to his papa in Luke 23, 46? Papa, father, into your hands I commit my spirit now. So he already did ascend. Why is he saying he didn't ascend? Because now he's got his glorified body. And he hasn't ascended with his glorified body yet. But he did ascend with his spirit and his soul. What you see is not who you are. All the little pretty makeup and all the pretty ties and all the pretty uh, way you fix the hair and get up all ready for Sunday and you put on the birthday smile. But you was yelling in the car. I know that don't happen to you either. And, and I, oh, how, how you do it? Bless you. All that stuff. That's not the real you. That's the body. We're going to stay fit. We got to get better. We got to run. We got to do this. Your soul and spirit live forever. And, and that's what happened. Jesus, what happened to him when he died? Y'all know what happened to him? He went to a place called Hades. And you're like, where's Hades? Jonah 2.2. 2. It's in the belly of the earth. Jonah 2.2. 2. And in according to Ephesians 4.8, Jesus Christ actually went to Hades. He actually went and took the spirits out of there and took them to heaven. And you're like, what? I don't get it. Luke chapter 16. Verses 19 onward, rich man, poor man, 
Rich man, he goes to, to Hades when he dies, because not because he's rich, but because he don't know God and he don't want God. The poor man, he gets to go to the nice side of Hades, the paradise side of Hades. Why he go there? Because he's poor? No, because he loves God. And so there is a good side, the paradise side, Abraham's bosom side, and there's a tormented side of Hades that's, that's like burning and it's not hell yet. And it is not purgatory. Don't nobody think, oh, when they die on the 40th day, I get a priest, and they come and do this holy thing, and they get you out of, ain't nobody going to get you out of Hades. Because the next step from Hades is hell. Nobody get, you want Jesus, you get him today. Before your last breath. And so, so Jesus goes to Hades, Ephesians 4, 8. And he, right there, takes all Abraham, Isaac, uh, Jacob, uh, Joseph, all the Old Testament saints with him, and he takes them to heaven. Why could they not go before? Because they didn't have the blood of Jesus. They had the blood of lambs, but not Jesus. Now Jesus gets to present them before the Papa, saying they are cleansed. They believed in me before. How about this side, the tormented side? Oh, this side is getting more and more populated as we go along. They stay there until it's time to go to hell. And I'll tell you when. What happens today when someone dies? This is something we don't like to talk about. Death. It's a coffin. What happens to people when they die? My daddy just died. We buried him on the 31st of, of March. And my soul is so happy. Why? I mean, I cried so many tears because we were so close and he loved God and Jesus so much. He put that love in my soul. He put the love of the word of God in my heart. Why am I happy? Because my daddy's body may be in the ground and it is, but his soul and spirit is with Jesus Christ. He's dancing. He's happy. He is hearing, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, inexplicable words and colors and beauty. And the, oh, can you imagine being with the resurrected Jesus Christ? Can you imagine dancing with him, hugging him, loving him? He is with the Father. So I rejoice. See, saints today that die go straight up to heaven with their spirit and soul. But I want you to know the Hades side that was good is totally empty. It will never be populated again. But the tormented side, those who don't know Christ and they die, they go straight to Hades on the tormented side. It is not purgatory. It's over. And that's just the beginning, the torment. And so we'll find out in a minute what happens to them. So what happens next to us, y'all? What happens before we get to heaven? How does this all work? Well, all of a sudden, the rapture is going to occur. How do we know that? Jesus talked about that in John chapter 14, verses 1 through 3. John 14, 1 through 3. He, Paul talked about it in 1 Corinthians 15, 51. He talked about it in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. What did he say? In an atomic second, in a twinkling of an eye, Jesus Christ is going to come and take his people home. It doesn't mean if you're in church... It don't mean if you're pretty. It don't mean if you're good because there's going to be a lot of good people in hell. I don't say that with pride. I say it with a broken heart. There's going to be a lot of good people in hell. So when the rapture occurs, my daddy's body that's in the ground is going to be glorified in a split second and it's going to meet his spirit and soul from heaven and they're going to meet in the air with Jesus Christ. But what happens to you and me? Well, in a split second, ooh, it'd be so good right now. Bam, we just, in a split second, our bodies will be glorified and we'll go through the ceiling, we'll go through the roof and meet our Lord in the air. And you're like, how are we going to, uh, concussion through the ceiling? Baby, there ain't no excedrin in heaven. So, you don't know, no, no, no need to worry about a concussion. You just need to be in Christ because your body's going to change. Your soul doesn't change because once you come to Christ, your soul lives forever and your soul is alive and your soul is pure and your soul is holy, righteous. It'll never change. But the mind will because our minds are messed up, huh? Some people beside you, they're messed up, y'all. You might be messed up too. I'm messed up. It's all good. God's working on me. Okay, so, so we'll get to go to heaven. What happens to us in heaven? Seven years. 
We'll be in heaven for seven years. We'll go to the Bema seat. What's the Bema seat? 2 Corinthians 5.10. It's a judgment seat. It's not like, oh, I'm going to send you to hell. You shouldn't have come up here. It's not like that. We're already in heaven. So when we're up there when, and the angels are singing, uh, holy, 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 according to Revelation 4.4, 4, and, and there is worship and there is joy and there is peace and there is love, we're going to the Bema seat. Everything you and I did for Jesus Christ will last We'll get crowns. He'll reward us. He, you'll see, you'll like, for me, you're giving this to me. I can't believe you love me so much. And he's given you rewards and crowns in heaven. But those things we did for, for ourselves or, or in, in pride or whatever, those things burn. They don't last. They don't last. Do things for Jesus Christ. Serve people. Serve God. Do it. Do it for his, his glory. You will get rewarded in heaven. And then and then we're going to have a, a marriage. It's not uh, till death do us part. We, the church, get to marry Jesus Christ. We'll become one with him, according to Revelation chapter 19, verse 7. We'll get to marry Jesus Christ, and he will give us white linen, and we will be, listen to what the word says, we will be rejoicing. We will be glad. There's gladness and rejoicing. There's no weeping in heaven as you're doing this marriage with Jesus Christ because he loves you so much, and he gives you white glorious linen and then we get to have a supper of the lamb revelation 19 7 this is seven years up up in heaven and, and the marriage supper of the lamb and we're going to eat some food like you never ever ever seen y'all it's going to be so good ain't no cardiologist going to go watch your body mass index boy you obese you need to change your way you need to walk 10,000 steps a day you know you know how cardiologists are so, you don't have to worry about the food. You eat like you, oh, it's, it's heavenly. It's good. The taste buds are just going to like, just pop because you're like, I can't, I can't believe this food. I can't believe this love. I can't believe this goodness. I can't believe this favor. I don't have no worries here. What's happening on earth during the seven years? Ooh, child, don't get stuck down here. Because if you think coronavirus was bad and ugly, ugliness is about to show its face in the tribulation. If you want toilet paper and a bottle of water, you won't have to get the 666 to get it. 666 right hand, 666 on the forehead. When you walk into my office, my manager, she'll take your temperature. Stick your forehead out. We'll get a temperature. They're just training you today. Training the people, stick your forehead out. Let me get you 666. It's just a training. Get ready. Get ready. And so hell on earth, volcanoes, tsunamis, half of the world's population, I, four billion people will die by the half of the tribulation. That's crazy. It's going to be terrorizing, sores on the skin, sun scorching people. It's going to be madness. Ain't nobody got your air conditioning going. You are not going to sit there pretty and going, I like this. No. I'm telling you, don't get stuck down here. And so after that seven years, we come down on white horses, y'all, 1911 of Revelation, with Jesus Christ for the war of Armageddon. He will take out all. The world governments. Say bye-bye to the world governments. Say bye. Y'all don't do us no good. Jesus does us good. We respect our government. We pray for our government. We want the Lord to heal our government. But the Lord's government is the best government ever. And so... He comes down, he obliterates everything, and all of a sudden, he will rule from Jerusalem for a thousand years. Ooh, those who got glorified, those crowns, we're going to be ruling the lands. I told him I want a little part of Maui, and uh, it's all good. Y'all let him know who you want and uh, where you want. And so you, you get what you, he gives you according to what we did for him. Now, that doesn't mean we work to get salvation. He gives us salvation. He did the work on the cross. We didn't do nothing to deserve salvation, nor will we ever deserve anything to get salvation. But after we get salvation, we love him so much, we work for him. We love him. Thousand years, the lion ain't going to roar, the, the snake ain't going to bite. Uh, it's going to be so beautiful during that. I don't have time to tell you all, but if y'all want to know, I finally, finally, finally rev it up series, my books on Revelation. It took me four and a half years to write these, and the Lord said, child, before the rapture, please. 
before the rapture. So it finally came out. And it'll be outside, and I'll be outside with you. So, a thousand years. And then, and then, and then. Oh, oh, oh. Then all those people who did not accept Jesus Christ, they will resurrect. Now it's their turn for the rapture. They will get their eternal bodies. They had to wait that long. They, their bodies were just dead. But they were being tormented in Hades. Their Hades spirit and soul rises up. Their body, eternal body, meets them. And they get to the great white throne of God. Ooh. Books will be opened. According to Revelation chapter 20. Books will be opened, and the book of life, the Lamb's book of life, God will be looking. Your name is not in here. And they'll get to go to hell, which is so tragic. Is your name written in the book of life? Because if it isn't, you go into the great white throne. And at the great white throne, chronicles of books are opened. And you'll say, I did this, I was good, and I didn't do anything bad. And, then, and God will look at Jesus and say, he's good. Only Jesus. Only Jesus. That's good. Because his good works brought you salvation. But you rejected my son. You rejected my gift. You rejected my favor. You rejected me. And because they reject God, then they don't want to hang out with God. So they are cast into outer darkness for eternal hell. While we, we get to be with the Lord forever and ever. There's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. This earth as we know it will pass away according to Revelation 21.1. It's going to go away. Heaven is going to pass away. You're like, how so? Well, Satan desecrated heaven. He des it's going to pass away. And there's going to be a new... Remember Jesus? John chapter 14, 1 through 3. I go and prepare a place for you. He's building a mansion for you. And who better? You don't need no doctor or a lawyer or a contractor. You need Jesus. He's the carpenter. Amen. Amen. He's fixing it with his hands. A place for you. And what's this place like? Well, it's called the New Jerusalem. And it's going to descend down from heaven. And it's going to be on the new earth. And, and this, it's, it's 1,500 miles long. 1,500 miles wide. And it's 1,500 miles high. And it's got like golden streets. It's got walls made out of diamonds. It's got 12 foundations. And, and the foundations are like sardix and, and sapphire and rubies. It's so beautiful. It's, it's going to be so elegant. And now, now you know why there ain't no thieves in heaven. Because they'd be walking by the wall. They'd be like, ooh, I like that diamond. <laughs> that's messed up. But that's why there ain't no thieves, because there's a lot of gold and jewelry up there. And we're just like, this is my mansion. I get to live. It's going to be with God. You're not going to say TGIF. Thank God it's Friday. You're going to say TGIH. Thank God it's heaven. You're going to be. It's not going to be people like, well, I think I'm going to be bored. Shut up. There ain't no boredom in heaven. You're going to go from one universe to another universe. Today, y'all get all excited. We get all excited. I'm going to Disneyland. It's the happiest place in the world. I'm so happy. You ever see the children in Disneyland? They're like, uh. I'm like, that ain't happy. And another child looked possessed uh, uh, like that. I'm like, that child really not happy. It is not the happiest place in the world. Although I become like a kid. When I go there, it's lovely. But never mind. Heaven is... Can you... Going from one universe to the next? I'm not talking about cross California lines, y'all. And go, ooh, I went to Arizona. No, I'm talking about you going from one universe, galaxy, to the next to see the beauty of the Lord. And it's going to be endless. There will be no more tears. No more sorrow, no more pain, no more darkness, no more heartaches, no more falling, no more losing, 
No more loss. No more death. It's going to be a beautiful, beautiful place. I'm going to be bold and ask you something. Is your name written in the book of life? If you are unsure, you are messing with your eternity. If you are unsure today, you are messing with eternal life because this ain't it. And if you are unsure today going, I don't know, I don't know, I hope I am, I think I am, I, I think I, I will be, I don't know if I go to the rapture, will I be up or will I stay down? Do I have to go through the tribulation? Will I get to 66? Oh, look, you need to know today. And I want you to be bold today because you're in a church, this church. I love this church because it loves people. And we love Christ. And we love the Word of God. If you are unsure, you're amongst friends here. If you're unsure, I want you to raise your hand. If you're unsure, I see you. I see you. Hard to see from up here. Anybody else? I see you. Yes, sir. I see you. Be bold. I'm not talking about, I'm going to get a new car, or we're going to get a new apartment, or we're going to do this. This is about your life after. Anybody else? I see you. Anybody else? Be bold. I see you. I see you. Anybody else? I see you. I see you. Yes, yes, yes. Now I'm going to be bolder. For those who raise their hand, you're amongst family here, and you are much loved. Stand up. I'm going to pray with you. Stand up. You raise your hand. Now stand up. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 To the Lamb of God. Hallelujah, stand. Pray with me this prayer. Pray with me. And Christians, Christ followers, you pray out loud to help them. Pray it loud. Pray it with all your heart and soul. And just give your heart and soul to Jesus Christ right now. Father God, I thank you that you sent your only son, Jesus Christ who died on the cross just for me. I thank you, Father. And I'm a sinner. And I accept your clean blood, your pure blood, your divine blood. And now I'm cleansed of all my sins yesterday, today, and even tomorrow. And my name My name is written in the book of life. And I received the Holy Spirit. Come into me, Father. Strengthen me. And let me be your disciple. And let me love you. And love people. Serve you. And serve people. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Praise God. I know we wonder, and those who have given their hearts to Christ, please seek counselors. Counselors, please seek them out and love on them as we do in our church here. There's a song I want to sing, if I could sing it, just a short segment of what heaven is like. No more nights. No more pain, no more tears, never crying, crying again, praises to the great I am, we will live in the light of the rest. Yes, we will live in the light of the rest.
Hallelujah. Praises, praises, praises to our God. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless him. Bless his holy name. Bless him. Bless him. He is worthy of honor and praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May he change your countenance from mourning to joy, to joy, to joy in the name of Jesus Christ. Those with sickness, the word has gone forth. Not me, the word, and you are healed in the name of Jesus. Those with broken hearts, the word has gone forth, and you are healed in the name of Jesus. Touch yourself and say, I am healed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God bless you and keep you. Amen. Amen. I'll see you outside.